the standard normal curve. And, and this is basically if you have a, a normal distribution, uh, you should be able to read the Z value from a table based on uh, the statistical um, calculations of the, the, the reliability. Um, and then we have S naught, which is the standard deviation. And this is the standard deviation of our traffic load. We also need to know this um, to know what is the variance and standard deviation of our traffic calculation. Calculations. Sn is the basic number that we are looking for, and that's representing the structural number for the pavement. And then delta psi is the one that we were discussing. It's basically the loss in serviceability. in the pavement during lifetime. It's basically the initial PSI, PSI zero minus PSI terminal serviceability index, right? And then uh, MR, we slightly talk about this when we remember when we were talking about the aggregates, we talked about the MR, the resilient modulus. And uh, this is basically the same concept soil resilient modulus. but this is only for subgrade materials. And it's in PSI. Okay. Now we need to go back and look at each one of these elements and see how we can calculate each of these uh, in in our design process, right? All right, so let's move on over here um, and talk about the, the traffic or equivalent Let's talk about the W18 or ESA, equivalent single axle load. So why we talked about why we need an equivalent single axle load instead of a combination of many different types of loads. And we slightly talked about this uh, before, but I'm gonna show you the different types of axle loads and different types of tire combinations that we might have. And, and, and again, um, since let's say you have a tire or an axle, a single axle um, with single tires on each side, you have a specific type of loading on each one. If this is a, a passenger car compared to a truck, compared to a trailer, or a bus or an RV, right? So we want to know, or we want to combine or convert everything uh, um, or every different combinations to a standard loading. And that is standard loading, again, is 18 kips. And of course, that's 18,000 PSI. So for example, if you have a passenger car, that's pretty much way less than 18,000 PSI. So your equivalency factor will be something like 0 0.002, right? Um, but I'm gonna show you how, how this works. Okay, now let's talk about 
different types of axles. First, if you look at it from the top, this will be a single axle with single type, right? So single axle with single And then you can have a single axle but with double tires. So this will have single axle double tires. And then you can have a, a tandem axle, which is a combination of two single axles next to each other, right? So this is going to be uh, tandem axle. Again, single tire. And then uh, you can also have tandem axle uh, dual tires, right? So you have, this is dual tire and another dual tire here. This is gonna be tandem axle dual tires. And in some cases, in, in very rare cases, if you have a big uh, trader, you might have uh, you might have uh, tri the axle or triple axle, right? This is going to be a triple or something we call it tri -dim. And, uh, and of course, you're going to have the single tire option and the dual tire option. Okay, now, how do we calculate the equivalency factor or how do we calculate the, the ESO factor, right? Uh, let me give you one example, and this will be very um, easily understood if you know your equivalency factors and how you can calculate the, uh, or you can convert different types of, or different combination of traffic into a, a unique uh, universal axle load for all the traffic loads, right? So let's say you have you have cars, pickups, and a light van. These are basically regular passenger cars, right? And um, in terms of axle, you will have 2,000 pounds single axle for these ones, right? And then uh, you have a single unit truck. which has 8,000 pounds uh, in the front. Like so. For the steering axle with the front axle. And then it has a 20,000 pounds uh, single axle. Or the rear, or they, they call it the drive 
axle or the rear axle, right? And then um, you will have a tractor or semi trailer truck. So tractor, semi trailer. For this one, you have three axles, right? So let's end this one a little bit. We have 10,000 pounds, um, single axle for the steering. So basically the front one, steering axle. We have 16,000 pounds. Um, tandem axle. Um, for the drive. And then you have 44,000 trailer uh, or triple axle for the trailer. Right. Now, and the combination of uh, the daily traffic is that from the first group, move this a little bit over here. So from the first group, you have from the first group, you have 30,000 day and this is a a D T. I hope you remember a D T from traffic engineering or transportation engineering a T T was average annual daily traffic and that's a combined traffic right so we have 30,000 um, of cars, pickups, and light vans. We have, in one day, we have 1,000 of single unit trucks. And uh, we also have 350 of these uh, semi-trailers. Now, the question is, what is our ESOL, or what is equivalent single axle load this combination of traffic. Of course, if you want to look at this and if you want to design a pavement system for this traffic, you cannot combine all this traffic. Just add, you cannot just add them up because you have different single, uh, you have different axle types or axle loads, and also different types of vehicles. So you you need to first convert everything to a unified or a uniform universal uh, axle load system. And then um, by that time, you should be able to add everything uh, and find the equivalency factor. Okay, now, how do we do this? Let's say we have a passenger car. And for each axle, uh, this is the first group, right? So for the first group, we have two 2,000 pounds. So each one of these is two kips, right? 2,000 pounds. And it, it's a single axle, right? So this is single axle. Right? So that's the first group. For the second group, we have single unit trucks. Right. So for a single unit truck, we have something like this, right? Um, have uh, only two axle, one in the front. The one in the front is 8,000 pounds single axle. That's a steering one. So this is eight kips single axle. 
then we have another single axle in the back or in the rear uh, which is 22 kips we have 22 kips um, again single axle right and then the third group was slightly larger um, or a semi trader right um, Front one is a 10,000 pound single axle, right? So uh, we have 10 kips here. Single axle. And then we had uh, 16,000 for the drive. And then that's a tandem axle, right? So over here we have a tandem axle and the total load for the tandem axle is 16 kips. Tandem. And then we have a triple in the back or in the, the the trailer part, which is 40, and that's a triple, right? Now, all we want to know is if we want to add these up, we need to know exactly how much, uh, how many of the single will be equivalent to these types of uh, different combination of loads, right? So we want to convert everything here to one single load, 18 kips, your axle load, right? And then uh, that total number will be our the total, will be our W18 number, right? Now, how do we do this? There are uh, specific tables and design tables to uh, look into this and just find the, the equivalency factors. I wanna show you what are the equivalency factors for these ones and then uh, see how we are using the design tables to find the, the, the number of W18 single axle equivalent load, right? So as soon as I upload this one, I will be also uploading the the tables, so you should be able to see uh, how we use the tables or how do we find uh, the equivalency numbers for the tables. Now, when, when you want to use the tables, so using design tables, equivalency factor. Now uh, there's one, one set of table for um, single axle loads, right? There is one set of table for uh, tandem. There is one set of table for okay. Now, uh, and what you see in the table, I'm going to upload an example of the table, but what you will see in the table is that um, there are a bunch of
Anyway, there are a bunch of um, columns and rows here. The, the rows here, or the, the, the columns, sorry, the columns here show different SN values. And then uh, the rows are the equivalency factors. So these are the equivalency factors. Now, if you see um, over here, we have, or we need to know the SN to calculate the equivalency factor and also uh, therefore calculating the the, the total ESO or total W18. But the problem is that if we go back to the equation, the equation, okay, here we go. If you go back to the equation, you see that in the equation, SN is actually the unknown that we are looking for, right? And we have it over here and we have it over there, right? And although W18 is on the left side of the equation, we should know W18 to calculate SN because SN is the number you calculate and based on SN, you should be able to calculate the, the thickness of different layers and also, uh, and that would be your final design, right? All the other parameters like ZR, S, uh, not MR, these are all supposed to be known parameters, delta PSI, and the only unknown is actually uh, SN right here. So we are looking for SN. And, and there's always a channel, another channel, sorry, a, a challenge every semester to find a single equation that can calculate SN based on these parameters. Because if you look at the equation, this the equation is, is set up in a way that you have the left part of the equation and you have some parameters in the right part of the equation. And you're looking for some uh, variable as SN, which is your unknown. And it's not right, right in regular mathematical equations that your unknown is on the left, right? So. Um, the challenge here is to, to see if you should be able to, or if you are able to find a mathematical equation that can calculate SN based on all these other known parameters. So all the, the, the red ones, the red uh, highlighted ones are the known parameters. And the green one, SN, is the one that we are looking for, right? Now, that's one challenge that if you're interested, we can have uh, sort of an extra credit homework for that. And the second part of that extra credit homework will be, uh, since this is not a regular or a traditional mathematical equation, we should use a try and error or some sort of a solving equation or solver equation to, to find the SN from the unknown parameters. Now, if you can write a MATLAB code, this, this should be, I, I assume this should be a, a one line of MATLAB code. If you can write a MATLAB code or even uh, design an Excel spreadsheet that can solve the, this equation and find SN based on the known parameters, that would be uh, an extra credit to the homework for your um, final grade. So I'm going to explain those, uh, or or if you're interested, at the end of the session we can we can uh, have a quick poll and see if you if you want to take on that homework, we can post it on Canvas and you can try it out. And uh, I'm going to give you some numbers to to see if you should be able to, to calculate um, or to run the equation in MATLAB or Excel and see if it works. Um, okay, so let's uh, keep this right here, the ESL calculation part. I'm gonna upload the tables 
and uh, you should be able to use the tables to calculate the ESO uh, on your own, right? I'm gonna give you one example and then the rest of it should be the same. For example, if you look at the tables, the equivalency factor for a single axle load um, with the assumption, oh, okay, so one more thing that you see that these tables, we talked about the SN and how we calculate it because um, at this stage that we are calculating W18 or traffic, we still don't know SN, right? Because that's our unknown parameter. But at the same time, to calculate the W18, which is one of the input parameters in the equations, we need to know SN. So it's, it's basically a loop. You need to start assuming an SN value. So assuming uh, or having an initial assumption let's say we usually start with four and then uh, we do all the calculations so let's say we assume that the dsn is four we don't know yet right we assume sn is four we go to the tables look for equivalency factors we calculate uh, so we go to the tables on tables, we calculate ESO, right? And then uh, we just put everything into that equation from the equation, we calculate SN. If this SN is not close to our initial assumption, we need to change the initial assumption, go back and redo the SN, the DE cell from the tables and then find a new SN. You see that the, the challenge here? So for example, if your initial assumption was four and the final SN from the equation is 4.5, you need to scratch the initial assign, the, the initial, uh, let's say this is five, right? You need to scratch the initial assumption instead of four this time you need to use 4.5 go back again to the tables these tables up here um, find the newest e cell and find the new sn if the new sn is let's say 4.55 it's close enough to the initial assumption and this will be your final sn right uh, might not make sense now, but if you, after we, we do an example or, or after I post the tables on the, um, on Canvas, uh, you should be able to see the, uh, the challenge here. Okay, let's say for example, if you assume SN is equal to four, uh, the equivalency factor, if you go back to our passenger car, the equivalency factor for our passenger car will be zero 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 two right and for each uh, that's for each uh, so for each for one passenger car for one passenger car we have we have two axes, right? So we have zero, 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 0002 plus zero, zero, 0002. I guess I have an extra zero here, right? So okay, that's fine. That would be zero, 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 0004. So that's for one car, right? That's for one. Right. And if you go back to the table, we have 30,000 of these cars, right? I hope you're following. Okay. 
me see. Okay, so that's the equivalency factor for one car. And then we have 30,000 of these in the traffic. So we have 30,000 times the equivalency factor for one car. And that would be how much? 1.2, right? I guess I have an extra zero here because it should be 12 technically, but that's fine. Yeah, so it should be 12. Now, what this means, this means that 30,000 of this vehicle in the traffic is equal to 12 of 18. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Right? So this means that we are converting the effect or the damage from 30,000 of these vehicles in the traffic combination, the damage it will be equal to as if we are having only 12 of a single axle load, which is with the load of 18 kips or 18,000 pounds. So that's how we basically convert everything to a single axle equivalence load so that we can combine all the traffic together and, um, and uh, have the equivalency factor, right? Now we, we can do the same thing uh, over here, here, uh, for this one and so on. And for each one, th there is one table for single axle, there's another table for tandem axles, and there's another table for triple axles. And those are all the same based on SN. So you basically assume an initial SN, go ahead and find the equivalency factor from the table. And then from there, you should be able to put them all together and uh, calculate what is the uh, the equivalent 18 kip axle um, in the combination of traffic. Of course, you need to uh, have the, the total number of passing of that type of vehicle in the traffic, right? That's basically the, 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 the process to calculate W18 and, uh, and ESA. So I'm gonna give you one scenario um, with all the numbers. So you should be able to, uh, to work on your Excel spreadsheet or uh, your um, MATLAB code and see if uh, you can figure it out, right? So let's assume that So this is one uh, scenario that W18 is 9 million, right? So let's say we converted everything to the 18 kip single axle load and we applied the number of, um, of traffic passing of each type of vehicle and we add them all together. And that's how we come up with the uh, the total W18. So let's say the total W18 for our traffic is 9 million and uh, our MR, the, the um, so MR, the resilient modulus of the subgrade soil is uh, we have we can say let's say 4,500 and then the standard deviation is 0.45 and the Z value or ZR is negative 1.645 and I believe that's, oh, and the Delta PSI is so 
let's plug in these numbers into that equation and see if we can calculate Sn. Perhaps we can try using a, a, a calculator solver for, for uh, to do that. And it might be a little bit challenging to just use a solver, um, but you can try that. But it's gonna be much easier using the solver option in the, in the Excel, or even just basically uh, 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 developing it. It's, it's a column of different numbers, uh, different SN numbers and try them uh, one by one automatically in the Excel uh, format to, to see which one will be uh, the log 10 of WT on the left side of the equation. And um, again, I assume that this will be only one line of code in MATLAB and it should be pretty straightforward. You just uh, plug in the equation and do, you, you, you assign the variable, the numbers to the variables, and you should be able to solve the, uh, the equation for SN, okay? So that's pretty much the, um, the basics of the ASHTO uh, design methods for flexible pavements. For, we have the similar approach, uh, but with a different equation for rigid pavements, for concrete pavements, that I'm gonna show you uh, next session. With that, I guess that would be it for today.